We've all got scars, some on the outside and some on the inside, but we can't be defined by our scars. I've spoken with some extraordinary people about how they've become empowered by their scars. This is I've Got Scars, baby. So I am so excited right now. We have a very special guest on the show. You, I know you've seen this face before. <laughs> you didn't sing her. And like everything, first of all, let me, let me just, before I even say your name, I just need to let you know, I didn't stalk your IMDB because I'm like, (laughs) I've seen you in everything. So, I mean, things like fame, nightmare on Elm street, a different world, you know, I'm a different world, my show. That's my show right there. (laughs) New Jack city, Martin. And that's just, that's just like a little teenage bit of things you didn't did. Okay. A little teenage things you did. So. You have seen her. She is an author. She is a mom. She's a wife. She's an incredible actress. And her name is Kelly Jo Mentor. I'm so excited to Hi. have you on the show. I really, <laughs> really you. am. Okay. And let me just tell you, with this big, beautiful hair that she has and this the, the grace that she has presented you with thus far, before you even said anything, I just need to say, she got a story. Yes, she does. Okay. <laughs> and today you are going to share your story with us. Today we're going to talk about finding your divinity in the darkness. Man, because you you got some stuff. You have been through some things in your life, but you have come out through all of this and you are shining. You are doing some amazing things. And I'm so happy to have you on the show. Oh, thank you for inviting me. Uh <laughs> I'm really glad to be here. And if I can just, uh, I'm going to just be me. I'm not fronting because I don't care. It (laughs) is what it is. And if I can help somebody through my story, I'm glad to tell it. I love it. I love it. And I appreciate it. And and that's what this this platform is really about, is about narrative therapy. Um, And sometimes, you know, you, you, you hear people's testimony, you hear what they've been through. And just by listening to that, it can really empower you in your own life's journey. So that's really what this, this platform is. And, and one of the things that actually, before we even get to your story, one of the things that really intrigued me uh, and why I kind of labeled the, the, the topic what it is, is simply because I think some people think that uh there's a quote unquote right path, so to speak. Um, there's a one way to do things. There's a quote unquote right or wrong. And sometimes I think that you go through what you go through to grow and you to, you learn things, you grow, you evolve. And, and sometimes that's just what it is. You're presented with some things in life. You do the best that you can. And, and, and that's, that's your experience. And so, I, you know, I don't want people to feel like it's always just about, oh, I had to have done it this way. I should have done it that way. I should have done, you know, go to college, do this, do it like that, get married at 25, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? And sure. so, yeah. So let's go ahead and get to it. So what, what was <laughs> life like for you, Ms. Kelly Jo, growing up? You know what? I had uh, a big family growing up. My mother divorced my dad when I was like one years old and she remarried when I was probably going into kindergarten. He had three kids, so there were nine kids in the house. Mm -hmm. Uh, When I was going to sixth grade, I think my mom divorced him. And then my mom and my sister, Stacy, who's three years older than me, uh, we lived, we all lived together. But uh, I had a, a cool little childhood. I mean, you know, I grew up in Compton. I'd ride horses, shoot BB guns, uh, make go-karts. I was a t- total tomboy. But, I mean, we had a lot of fun. So was there dysfunction? Of course. You know what I mean? I would steal little kids' lunches. And I'm like, wow, look at this sandwich, how nicely it's cut. We just didn't have that. You, you weren't getting seconds. It was, you know, you, you had to make it happen. So when my mom got a divorce uh, and we moved to Highland Park, uh, 
you know, it was a whole different lifestyle. We were, we were very unsupervised. My mom would be gone for two weeks at a time, mm. you know, leave us with $20. Like, what, what are we supposed to do? Hell, of course we was robbing people. Of course we were doing burglaries because we, we were on survival mode. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, so I'm guessing your age, you said you're, you're a teenager at this time. Well, and you're 13. 13. You're at home for two weeks by yourself with $20. And you have to basically steal in order to eat. So, so did your mom ever, did she come back and say what was going on? Did she just feel like you guys could no, take my No, mom, my mom comes from a long line of career criminals in the family, really. Uh, so no, I mean, we would do robberies. A parent telling you, no, this is the wrong thing. No, it wasn't discouraged. It wasn't. I mean, because I would steal art. I would steal all kinds of stuff. So I wasn't like your average, uh, you know, yeah. of feeling something of some value. Yeah. So, so one of the things you told me in your pre-interview was that you would do things like you always had a conscience. You always had a conscience and you would do things you knew it wasn't right, but you would do it anyway. So um, it, I, mean, it, it, I mean, that's just the, the ironic part of it. It's kind of like I didn't want to do a lot of stuff, but it's kind of like when you're on survival mode, you don't have that nurturing parent or, you know what I mean? It's like, it's a free for all, but deep down inside, okay, I might've did a robbery, but I'll pass the church. And I'm like, Oh, I'll make the sign of the cross. Yeah. I'd be like, God, if you just get me out of this. Okay. So yes, I would always defer to the Lord. I knew God was real, but I was still, you know, left to my own devices. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so I know that you started getting into gang activity as well. And, and, yep. and for you getting into making those associations, was that more of, was it still like a survival mode for you or was it just, it was the culture then, you know what I mean? Everybody would go downtown to, you know, Los Angeles theater, watch Bruce Lee movies. I mean, it was just a whole, it's a, it, it it's, it was a happening downtown. So you would see all the different gangs, all the people, people going to the movies. Whoop, whoop. So yeah, we just got involved in that, in that lifestyle. So yeah, we were definitely banging, but we didn't, you know, I wasn't down with like just beating somebody up or mm -hmm. I was never with that. And, you know, even being in the gang and your homeboy is supposed to be cool, but they'll rape you. Okay. How about that? Mm -hmm. uh, that didn't happen to me, but it did happen to some of my friends. I'm like, oh, hell no, I, I ain't with this. But I knew other people older than me that were in the, uh, you know, they were hustlers. So, you know, me and my sister, we would go get, you know, custom made clothes. I mean, we go to the after hour spot houses, gambling houses. I was doing all this at 14. Oh, my so, God. yeah. So wow. that's, that's what it was. And I, you know, I had older boyfriends. I actually had people that actually cared about me uh, that I really, really could have got turned out. But thank God they, they really cared for me, wanted me to go to school. Mm -hmm. I didn't have like, hey, we're kids. OK, you go to school. But the school is like uh, two miles away. You have no bus money. You have nothing to eat. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, OK, I can go to school. Or it was just you had to be self-motivated. So I, I was, you know, I was always like, Let's, that was my my catchphrase. Let's get motivated. Okay, we're gonna watch Soul Train. We're gonna clean the house up, and then we're gonna do a lick. Mm. So, wow. Yeah. So, so what made you get into acting? And how how old were you when you when you first started acting? Uh, you know what? I was working uh as a production assistant, and then I worked as a grip. And uh, one of my friends, I mean, my first role, I think one of them was uh, Fame. And there's a lot of break dancers. Ice-T, I think, helped me get that part. Uh, introduced me to the people. Then I did my first film, Mask. And I was still working. I didn't even tell anybody. I'm like, hey, I did just did a movie with Cher. And they're like, yeah, right. But uh, I wound up getting a development deal from that. But at that time, they didn't know what they were, I mean, you know. They didn't know what to do with me. 
but I had, did have a de development deal with, uh, with Universal. So it was been a trip. I mean, you know, acting is a part of just being on the street, just surviving. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to maneuver. You got to discern the situations. You know what I mean? Me and my sisters would look, we would just look like some straight up dudes. You know what I mean? And uh, nobody would know and we'd be doing stuff. Uh, you know, I'm on the bus stop. I'm sitting on my sister's lap. So these dudes don't come by and kidnap us, you know? All kind of crazy stuff, and I mean, we we've gotten out of situations, but it's really like, you know, me and my sister could not. We don't even have to say anything. We both know, like, oh no, we got to, we got to get out of here, or you know, jumping out of cars, all kind of crazy stuff. I mean, it's a miracle I'm here. Wow, wow, wow. So, so okay, when for someone growing up. And and they're in a particular environment. They grow up just trying to survive. Do you feel how much do you think for a child the environment is around them as far as the influence it has on their life? Oh, I think it, the environmental is is huge. You know, because that's what it was. You know, your generational people on the county living in the projects, three, four generations deep. You know what I mean? Uh, I never wanted that. I knew I could do something. And I wasn't just around what, I mean, I was around Mexican gangbangers, black gangbangers. I was around hippies. I mean, we used to sell dust, uh, uh, you know, coke, all kinds of stuff. Even my mom, my mom is the one who actually turned me in. Mm. So that was probably a good thing. But she turned me in so she can go on a vacation to Europe so she would know where I would be. You know, oh. so it was like that. And then sometimes I just welcomed it because it's like, man, I'm tired. It'd yeah. be like a little vacation, like, oh, I'm going to eat three meals a day, be eating good. I'm going to be able to rest up and back out again. But I wound up having to go to this, uh, it's called Lathrop. It's a school for girls. It's connected to Central Juvenile Hall. And there, you know, I get to see a therapist once a week uh, and have group therapy. I believe in that now. Uh, I mean, and it was really good for me to to understand my mom as much as I could. You know what I mean? If you have a narcissist parent, and guess what? My mom is crazy as I don't know what. She's got some great qualities, but and I use those qualities. That's how I could maneuver with all kinds of different, all kinds of people. Always have, and I've taught my my kids the same thing. You know what I mean? So uh, that's a good quality to be able to assimilate. You know. You know, they say fake it till you make it. It's just like, no, nah, I'm not faking it. I believe this is what I'm doing. My sisters and I, we would go to the uh, the Coliseum and we're, you know, the Rolling Stones are playing. We're like, okay, we're invisible. We're going to get right through the gate. Of course, there's a jillion people. We walk right through because we believed it. Yeah. Mind you, it wasn't a whole lot of black people there, but it was just like, okay, we, we get up in this shit. I ain't paying for this. I'm, I'm going. So it's just kind of like a mental state of finessing. Mm. Very good finessers. And I think a lot of times when you are out on your own and you don't have that, you do have to finesse a lot of things. Uh, some good, some not so good, you know? Yeah. But it's kind of like, God, you know where I am with this. You know, uh, yeah. I don't want to live like this, but it's kind of like, this is what it is. And I knew people who had it worse than I did. Yeah. Wow. So what would you say the turning point? Well, actually, before we even get there, for your, your experience as an actor and when you started acting and, and doing that more, do you feel like that led you away from, from your, from, I guess, having no, to survive I mean, you know what it was it was uh no I, I i learned i went to the school learned film production you know what i mean i lived in manhattan beach me and my sister i would go to the store every night steal a steak eat i'm living in manhattan beach and i'm like man look at these white kids on the sand they just they're so nice they treat you know what i mean you don't really know how to act you know what i mean it's like huh, i'm going to these houses and i'm seeing all these mobiles of Calder and this, that, and the third. And it's kind of like, I knew about art because my mom would take us to all the museums. 
when we were growing up. So I, I knew about culture and things like that. Um, I think my, I got hit by a car, but nothing happened to me. And I'm just like, ah, okay, you got me. And my brother got saved who it was, there's no way because he was, he was out of control. So my whole family, we couldn't believe that. We were like, if he, this fool could get saved, okay, we're, you know, we'll do it. Yeah. But that doesn't mean like, it was just like, oh my, that was something that happened to him that was just, you know, like in one day and he never looked back. That was not my story. So, so what was your particular turning point? What was that thing that happened with you that you said, you know what? Ha, well, I mean, I you know what? I got, hit, I got hit by a car and I'm just like, uh, I mean, I remember saying, getting up, I'm like, oh, you got me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm telling the Lord, you got me. Yeah. You got my full attention, you know? But, it, you know, there was more, there was more drama along the way after that but it's like uh you know lord uh i believe what you say you say you are you know yeah. what i mean so i mean you know i've been i've been kidnapped yeah. you know and it's just like uh i didn't i didn't i never had that fear that you should probably have i was more like all right you do it then you know what's going down. And it wasn't like I have a gang of brothers. I have some sisters, but there's they're some, they're some shooters. They'll get you. You know what I mean? And I've seen all kinds of abuse in my own family. And, you know, I will inflict that same abuse on somebody who tries to do one of my family members and wouldn't think anything about it. Yeah. So going to doing the roles, it was funny because, of course, there wasn't like a lot of Black girls coming up at the time. And, of course, you know, I'm multicultural. Oh, you're Puerto Rican. Oh, you're this. You, you know what I mean? No, I'm, I'm black, but okay, cool, whatever. Uh, yeah. I could play those roles. It, it, it would be funny because it's like, you know, yeah, I know you wrote this, but uh, this shit ain't real. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm uh, here. Let, let me bring it on down to you so you can really understand it. And uh, I got a lot of roles that way. I think I'm. I haven't even begun to act. I know I can talk somebody out of killing me. So reading these lines, this ain't shit. That was my attitude. Uh, wow. Wow. So you had the experience where you were hit by a car. You was like, okay, God. Because I, I heard that somebody said, it's like there are different levels of almost like God speaking to you. One is like a still small voice. The other is kind of like a tap on the shoulder. And then the other one might be a punch in the gut. You know what I'm saying? Like it just gets louder and louder and louder. I mean, Audrey, there's just so many things, accidents, you know, flipping over five times and nothing happened to me. All I'm thinking about is, oh, who's going to feed my dog if I die? You know what I mean? Just crazy stuff. Uh, it wasn't one thing. It is just progressive, like, wow, Lord, thank you for opening up this door for me. I never had somebody come alongside me and like, hey, this film production thing, this is really good. I wanted to work. I wanted to do something. I'm creative. Uh, I'm kind of dyslexic. So it's kind of like, oh, I'd be reading a script. I could read the whole script, but just like two lines, I would be struggling with it. So I would really memorize stuff. Um, I mean, because we would be BSing people going in the stores. And, you know, I had friends who were jackers, still in mink coats, all kinds. So we would just have this whole scene that we would set up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's kind of like we are setting up vignettes. Yeah. To, 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 to get our money. Wow. So, so now, like looking back at your life experience growing up, what do you think are the benefits? I know one of the things that you mentioned was that you were fearless. And, you know, I know a lot of people deal with fear. And, and I know, if, I'll just say me, I have dealt with fear in my life experience. So what are some of the other qualities you feel like you developed that you don't feel like you may not have developed had you not had this experience? Oh, wow. That's, I don't know. I mean, you know, it, it, it's, I wouldn't say it's a fearlessness. It's kind of like, you know what, God, I know you're with me. I'm mm -hmm. going through this right now and I'm running down the street and this dude's on a swim bicycle and he's shooting at me, but he ain't hitting me. 
I'm just done, mm. you know? What I mean? So it's kind of like, God, I know you're with me. You know, like this is somebody I can depend on. I can talk to him and not like, oh, I have to go to some kind of flowery voice to speak to him. Like, Lord, can you help me out of this? You know what I mean? And, uh, he, you know, man, I've done some dirt and he still loves me. Yeah. That, that's the part that just always blows my mind. Not that you think that you're just going to uh, uh, pimp God when you think you need him, but it's kind of like nothing you're ever going to do, you know, is it's kind of like, I don't even know the scripture. It's like, you know, God's gifts are without repentance. So I think he gives you gifts and talents. He just wants you to use them for the kingdom. But it wasn't like, oh, something suddenly happened to me. I had this transformation. No, as I kept going along, mm -hmm. you know, I knew, uh, I knew what I wasn't going to do. You know what I mean? That, that, that's, that's, that's where it, the, I don't know if you call it fearlessness. It's, it's more like, Mm, I ain't doing that. You know what I mean? So, you know, there's people and all kinds of people and it, it starts off very subtly. Oh, let's, let's go to a, let's go to a psychic and stuff like that. I don't need to see no psychic. I didn't see the supernatural. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't seen some stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't have to try to convince me because you haven't lived in these shoes. You have no idea. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm not going to go out here and, and, and play with this dead thing that you're trying to get an answer to when I only, God can answer that and fulfill you. So it was just over time, different things in my life in maturing and uh, just reading God's word. And I mean, you know, like people say, you know, I didn't grow up in the church or anything like that. So it was just like, oh, people like, oh yeah, I stood on my word. I don't even know what that means. I just went in my closet and I stood on top of my Bible. I guess that's what standing on the word is. You know, my house is about to go in foreclosure, you yeah. know, $48,000. And it's like, you know, four fifty eight. somebody's calling me up talking about you got $48,500 here on my desk. I mean, because he'll do it for wow. you. Not because you need some kind yes. of miracle, because I trust God. I'm like, Lord, if you never do another thing for me, you're faithful. Yeah. You've been faithful. And that's why you can't really get people who are loyal. But that's like, that's a, that's a relic. Hmm. But I admire that, that God comes through for me. Maybe not always the way I think he's going to do it. But in hindsight, I'm like, oh, I see. Had this would have happened, this wouldn't have happened. You know what I mean? And it's kind of like it, it just maturing you and stretching you to, to, to trust him. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And how do you feel uh your experience has kind of shifted you in the way you treat other people i know one of the things that you said you know is shifted the way you like you as a mom and as a wife and things of that sort so yeah how how do I you just always you know what my mom used to be the kind of person that she would just run over you uh manipulate people talk down to people. I, I don't get down with that. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't care who you are. You know, you will get checked. You know, you, you can talk to people. You can have respect for people. I mean, there's people that on the streets. It's like, you know, uh, you treat a dog better than that. You know what I mean? They, they still deserve hello. How you doing? I'm not saying I do that to every homeless person I see, but it's kind of like, man, it's amazing that I still have empathy. And it's like, and I get, uh, I get turned up when I see something, you know, that's not just. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's kind of like I, I know what's right, and if you know what's right, then do right. Yeah, you know? I'm not trying to assimilate myself in, you know, Hollywood to say some catchphrase so I can get put on. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I don't care. I make my own movie if that was my, 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 my thrust of what I want to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, because at the end of the day, you can't stop me anyway. That's yeah. real. That's real. So what would you say to someone that is connected in, in gang culture or they're in, you know, some tough situations and they, they, they can't fully see past it? They're looking to get out and the, to escape it, but they can't really see it. Well, I mean, I don't, I, I can't speak for anybody else. You know what I mean? Number one, it's kind of like, 
some of these people that are in that, Audra, that's generation. The grandma was a, a gangbanger. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know people who the cousins, one was a, you know, this gang, the other one was this other gang. And, you know, they know not to come, you know, two blocks over, but they're still blood cousins, but it's like they're rival gangs. So it's kind of like environment. You gotta, you gotta be able to leave the environment if you can. You know, maybe some of these things you can't get out of, mm -hmm. especially in the in in the Mexican gangs. You know what I mean? It's kind of like I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. But can people be delivered? And yes, I mean I don't know. If people ever heard of Nikki Cruz? I mean mm -hmm. Nikki Cruz was a you know. He was really in that life in New York back in the day. I mean, I don't know if you've ever heard of A.R. Bernard. He's a pastor. He's awesome in New York. Mm -hmm. And he used to be a Muslim. And, you know, he went to one of his crusades and got saved by his testimony. So it was kind of like anybody can be delivered out of any situation. I do believe that. But it's kind of like you got to make your mind up. You know, are you willing to die for this? Because you're willing to die for the gang. You know what I mean? You know, you want to get put on, but it's kind of like it's a it's a pimp. The whole thing is a big pimp. Hmm. You know, what I mean? you can't. Are you really free or you just you never even left? I mean, I know people, you know, they haven't even been, you know, west of La Cienega Boulevard, been in L.A. their whole life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you're in the same uh, metro area or whatever and you don't know no better, how are you going to do any better? If you don't have mentors coming in and talking to you and being real and helping you to get the, the education that you need to, you, I mean, it's, it's just like you see black kids now, okay, you know, now they're skateboarding, you know what I mean? And black kids come in and they take over shit because they're fucking good, you know what I mean? But it's not like well, my kids went to school, oh, they had surfing for PE. Oh, wow. Had, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like it's your your zip code is going to dictate what you're going to get. Mm, that's true. That you is know, true. In, in a lot of in a lot of ways. And if you don't have that person that's in your life who is. Uh, I mean, and it really takes that who is, you know, really mentoring you, helping you to get on the right track. You know what I mean? You can you can rise above it because people do. But if you stay in the same environment. It's crabs, you know what I mean? And then once you do make it, everybody thinks that you owe them. You don't owe them nothing. You know what I mean? Everybody's got to make their own thing happen. But I think if you have some kind of mentorship. You know what I mean? You got kids right now. They're in the freaking car trying to get a Wi-Fi signal to go to school. You can't tell me these kids aren't going to fall behind. I was never that kind of learner. I'm an auditory processor. I learn by doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I so it, 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 in so many different learning styles. So it's like if the parents aren't on it and how can they be on it if they're hardly at home and they're barely trying to make it and they're caught up in the environment too. So it's just a generational uh, junk. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't think there's just a, a quick fix. Hey, if you just do this, if you, people could just do that, they've been done, did it. You know right. I mean? That's that's true. That's yeah, true. So, so so the idea is that a lot of times, and I think this is the thing for a lot of us, we're we're stuck in one particular paradigm and we can only see kind of we have blinders on. And it's almost like you don't know what you don't know. And so that that can apply to anybody. It's not even just somebody that's, you know uh connected with gangs or somebody that's doing this that over there it can be anybody so maybe exposure even just that's, trying to that's expose exactly your... that's exactly the point i was making it's kind of like hey you know what if you, you grew up with money hey you let's go play some tennis let's go to, you know what i mean you have a more of a carefree you know tennis what tennis court what basketball court net, but you, you make a net, you make a, you make a court, you know what I mean? It's like, it's just hard for black and brown people. You know what I mean? That's why I think it's hard, but it's good in a way because man, we come up with all kinds of stuff. You know what I mean? And I know at least for myself, I do all kinds of things. I am, I'm an artist. I'm a designer. I do things because this is what I know. 
You know what I mean? But like I said, if you don't have that champion or that person uh, who can motivate you, a friend, a grandparent, a cousin, somebody, it's it's very hard to do because it's kind of like you're really out on your own, but you know, at some point you're going to be on your own and you're going to have to do it and you'll make these choices. Yeah, that's real. Yeah. So what would you say to someone who feels like, because one of the things I, I really appreciate about you is, I, and, and I think generally speaking, what's really important is to feel like you still deserve to have a good life what do you feel like if someone said hey I've seen too much I've done too much maybe I don't deserve a second chance what would you say to someone that says or feels that way oh I mean you know I, I would say I feel you I get you, but you know what? Your father knew all that beforehand, before you were even created, before you were predestined on this earth for this particular time. And if people really read the Bible and the stories, the stories in the Bible are wild as I don't know what, man. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, you know, here is David. God said he's a man after my own heart, yet he goes and has sex with somebody else's wife and then kills her husband and God said he's a man after my own heart I mean I don't know I don't have the mind of God all I know is he loves me he said he will never leave me nor forsake me and that's what I know that's the surety that's the insurance policy that's written on my heart nobody can take that from me Audra you mm -hmm. know what I mean I talk to so many people of other faiths I mean and I used to talk to people because I'm like I'm really trying to win people for Jesus I don't have to win anybody for Jesus. You know what I mean? We have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is gentle and kind and is loving. You know what I mean? What you just need to do is love on people genuinely, genuinely. and they see your fruit of who you are. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't care if you're Bishop this and you got, you know, 12 letters behind your name. That stuff don't mean nothing. I mean, look at the churches now. You can't even get into a church right now. All the big church. So I had to read the word. You know what I mean? It's kind of like it was like a going to school, man. But you know what? I know the word. I've been around people. It's kind of like, you know, you might be a scholar in this. But guess what? I have the anointing, something you don't have. Hmm. So it really is about, I love what you said about just being kind and compassionate. And and one of the one of the things I know for me. It, it makes it almost easier for you to be compassionate with somebody when you fully see yourself and your own shortcomings and the things that you've experienced in your life that, that were difficult. It's like when you when you look at yourself and you're like, wow, that was it was hard for me to go through that. That was that was very difficult. It's almost like you you can look at someone else and in, in where they are and say, I get it. At the same time, I want you to keep going and doing what you're supposed to do, but I get it. I I can totally relate to them, but I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. Yeah. What I mean, I know I have four sons of my own, and I've had so many kids come in and out. You know, my own family members. You know, in you know, I've had to you know mentor them and have them in my home and, and take care of them, and you know because it's it's the love of God it's not something mm -hmm. I don't think you can really be compelled to do that you know that's something inside you mm -hmm. you know what I mean? because it's just like man I don't want to see this person go to the left so it's kind of like but we're so self-consumed you know my this how am I how much you know what I mean you're not thinking about other people mm -hmm. and then when you're thinking about other people and you're solving that problem the Lord will come alongside you and solve your problem. Or what are you willing to do to solve this person's problem? Or, or uh, you know, encouragement. You know what I mean? That's the love of God. So you'll know them by their fruits. I mean, you know, I love Jesus, but I know you can hear me. I'm, I'm, I'm cussing in here, but Lord, you know, uh, <laughs> it's that paradox. You know what I mean? But uh, I'm not going to do things to like, hey, I want to be in Hollywood to be inclusive, 
of this, this, and this. I don't care. You know what I mean? And and I think that's what so many people do. They sell out to 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 be in this business. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was getting money way before I was acting. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's, ne- it's never been about money for me. You know what I mean? It's kind of like it's just another another lane of creativity that I can do. So I was never chasing being an actress. This was just something that I got into. Thank God it was something that I was able to make money in. Uh, and I really do enjoy doing it. But it's kind of like that's just one slice of the pie. And I never like say I will never not do it again. But it's kind of like I'm not looking back what I did. That's cool. And I really appreciate that experience. I'm on to the next. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I, I appreciate your, your experience and, and I love your confidence in it because I feel like you're like, I know who I am. I've been through what I've been through and I feel like what's important to you is is authenticity that's what i'm picking up from you it's important to be your authentic self whatever your authentic self is and if your authentic self is like i love god but i'll be cussing sometimes that's what it is okay but you know what i think when you really get shook you know what i mean no you like you know you shook it's kind of like there's a certain humility it's like don't ever think this can't happen to you. That's that's what I do know. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's like a little self-check. Don't yeah. ever get too crazy because you know what? Those same people you're out there, you'll be out there just like them because it, it can happen. And I've seen it happen to people where it's like it was balling in the next minute, you know, sleeping on somebody's couch. You know yep. what I mean? And that's the pride of life. Yeah. So, so for me, I... I've lived here, I've lived here, and I've lived everywhere in between, but it's like, I'm grateful wherever I am. Yeah. You know, I, I'm thanking God. Thank you, Lord. I got a nice hot meal. I don't, I'm not eating no subpar food. I'm eating some good food. I got hot water. This might be stupid to somebody else, but if you have, you, you ever walked in my shoes, Yeah. you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, it's those basics. I can take a hot shower, I get some clean clothes. You know what I mean? I don't have to have a bunch of designer, this, that, and the third. I, you know, it's, it's, I'm trying to pare down my life. I want my life to be more simple. You know what I mean? So that, you know what I mean? Everybody, you get bogged down with a bunch of stuff. So if you were called to go somewhere, could you go? You could probably couldn't go because your thing stopped you. Mm. Now, now I don't I wouldn't say now I like some luxury in my life Audrey don't don't get yeah. me wrong yeah you know what I mean yeah. but it's kind of like hey I didn't had I, I, I didn't had some stuff and it's like you know what I can let that go yeah. I don't want anything to be a stronghold materially that I can't make a move because I am very resilient as far as that goes and I think that's hard for a lot of people I can let this go I'll be on somewhere else yeah you know? And I, and I try to teach my kids the same thing. It's kind of like, the, this is all very temporary. You know what I mean? How, how are you treating people as you mm-hmm. go on this journey? You know what I mean? So I really do think it's, how do you treat people? You know what I mean? And working in that, and working in that business, it's all businesses. You know what I mean? It's all crazy egos. This, it's a lot of different kinds of things. And, you know, especially coming from my background and then coming into the entertainment business, and people are being belittled and, you know, you know, cause this is the star. I'm like, I'm looking at this and I'm like, these are a bunch of tricks. Cause if you talk to me like that, you gonna get cussed out and I'm gonna tell you what, whatever. And my contract is a pay or play. Cause you ain't gonna disrespect me. That's what I'm not gonna have. But people will tolerate that in order to keep the money coming. They, they will, they will, but it's just like, that's just some, there's some stuff that you're going to suck up in life. Mm-hmm. And everybody has to do it. But I don't think you have to belittle me to do this job. Exactly. You don't have to disrespect me to do this job. You know what I mean? Hey, that's great. You're out here making $20 million on this picture. And I'm bringing you a bottle of water. But, but you're going to come correct when you talk to me. 
that part that part and i mean that, that just makes sense honestly that's just that's just it is it's just common sense Thomas but that doesn't mean people use it though true because people are just like i need to be the next this i need to and it's really tough i don't even know how how people do it now with instagram and you know kids how they're trying to come up and how they have all the pressures to be this certain thing. I mean, you know, we grew up and you go outside, you clean the house, you cook, you know, you get some water from the hose, you wouldn't come in back in until the street lights came on. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're gonna get creative out there. You're gonna do something that's like, go outside. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, that's why I love living by the beach because it's free. I can just walk on the beach. Uh, this does not have to be a big production. You know what I mean? Everything. Everybody makes such a big production to do one thing. No, just just go outside. And it's a cliche, you know, smell the roses, but that's what it really is at the end of the day. Cause I mean, I've had the opportunity to travel and mm -hmm. see some incredible things, but it's like, you know, I'm glad to get home and be in my own bed. I'm glad I'm in this fabulous hotel, but it's like, after I've been there a while, I'm ready to get home. Yeah. I'm ready to be in my own spot. It's kind of like, you can only be, you know, one place at a time, but it's just like, and no matter where I go, I always deal with the roots people. I don't like touristy stuff. Mm -hmm. I like to see people and how they're living. And when I see that, it really just comes down to humility and it humbles you because it's like, you ain't broke. You're not poor. You mm -hmm. just have never visit anywhere outside of California. And believe me, there's lots of poor people, but I'm talking about you know, people with hospitality and they have a dirt floor, they will still cook for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? That you, you ain't that poor. Hmm. You still out there eating hot Cheetos and, you know, Coca-Cola, whatever the hell you're drinking. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, you, you know, you're driving a Land Rover with a landlord. You can't, you know, it's just all this, this the, the pressure of trying to, hey, I need a Gucci. Gucci don't give a shit about you. You know what I mean? And there's so many other people, creative brands out there, but it's just the way it's set up. So without getting into something else, it's not geared for you to make it. Yeah. You know I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not set up for you to make it. You're not born into wealth. You know what I mean? So, you know, call it whatever you want to call it. All I know is I have my father who opens up the windows of heaven. He causes me to have favor. And I walk through those doors boldly because I know who I am. Getting back to what you're saying. Yeah. I do know who I am. Mm -hmm. I know who I am. I, I belong to the, I'm a child of the most high. So I take authority over situations. You know what I mean? I've been in situations where people trying to rob me and I'm like, I ain't going down, blah, blah, blah. And it doesn't go down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now that's probably stupid. Because, I mean, if somebody wants to take my, my shit, you, here, you can have it. I ain't dying over this. Yeah. You know, but it's kind of like, mm, nah. You know what I mean? Because I I, I'm always checking the spirit behind somebody's action, what they're mm. doing. So these situations don't even, they try to come near my door. But it's kind of like, I just have scriptures that I stand on. And, you know, I mean, I go to sleep at night. It's like, you know. The Lord, you know, he said he will perfect that which concerns me. And I sleep good at night. I go to sleep. Now, that doesn't mean I don't have all kinds of stuff going on in the peripheral, but I'm not, I'm casting my cares on him. Yeah. He'll give me a strategy. That's the yeah. thing. I don't have to call 10 people. Girl, what you think? Girl, I don't do that. Yeah. Because God will give it to you. Like, if you just ask. Yes, I mean, I think there is something about wise counsel. I yeah. mean, but it's kind of like there's been things I believe for. And it's like, I don't share them with people because you ain't even, you can't believe for that with me. You know what I mean? You, you're you not there. You know, I'm looking at some crazy impossible, you know, and it's just like that. It doesn't make sense. So that that's what Paige I'm on. Got you. Well, I love it so much. I love it, love it, love it. <laughs> Thank you so much for being a part of the show. Uh, your Thank story you. is very powerful. Thank you for sharing. And I mean, I, I told y'all, I told y'all she she didn't she didn't 
her story is something, okay? Okay, they didn't know well, how they believe me. Andrea, you too for even, you know what I mean? Everybody and their mama got a podcast and they want to hear about the next gossip and the next this, that, and just junk. So, you know, I try to be careful of what I'm doing. And it's like, I, this was a complete joy. Keep on going. Uh, you know what I mean? Because th there are people listening to this who are going to get a breakthrough because it's somebody that they can relate to. Yeah. You know what I mean? These are real people going through real struggles. And it's kind of like, man, I came out on the other side. That's, that's crazy. There's no yeah. way. I mean, if you know people that know me, it's like, it's a miracle to even, I'm still alive. I still have my intellect. You know what I mean? I, mm -hmm. it, it, it's a, it amazes me. Yeah. So that humility is what keeps me humble because I know where I came from. Yeah. And I don't ever forget that. Yeah. I, I love it. And I think it's really beautiful. And, and I just, I truly believe so many people can, can relate and connect to your story. And it doesn't even matter if you've had the same upbringing. I think the idea of fighting through whatever you needed to fight through to get to where you are is huge. So and I think a lot of people do it though, Audrey, just to my final thought on it mm -hmm. is I did all this through my faith in not God, but Jesus. Mm. Do you hear me? King Jesus. He mm -hmm. showed himself. He proved himself to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm like, you know, Lord, if you're really real, da 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 da. Not like you some trick daddy God. We just no, but I'm just like, I'm not discounting anybody's faith and what you believe in. Mm -hmm. I can just tell you my story and how Jesus is a friend. You know what I mean? I mean, when he said on that cross, you know, the first person you're going to be right here that person was a thief you know what i mean and he's going to be right here in paradise with me so you can believe it you cannot believe it you can do whatever this is only kelly joe's story and i and i'm gonna keep on telling it and it's real to me mm -hmm. and it's uh it's a uh, it's really you know people say they use that word a miracle but i'm like this this has been a miracle in my life and i'm like I couldn't believe, you know, I would be, I mean, I'm walking the streets of Hollywood looking for change and cigarette butts, okay? And now I'm like, you know, living in the the, the way the God kind of life that God has promised me. And if he tells me to go on somewhere else, I'll be doing that too. I love it. I love it. Kelly Jo, you are amazing. <laughs> Thank you yeah, so yeah. much. And 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 how can people if people want to follow you if people want to you know oh my gosh Audrey, you know what my, my kids call me i'm not even low tech they call me no tech i'm, <laughs> I'm the worst i mean like i got facebook people uh i'm just i'm just not good at it you know i probably got 10 pictures on my my instagram i don't know how to work it i don't feel like everything that i'm doing hey i gotta show you this yeah um, no, I get it. You know what I mean? But it's kind of, I, I enjoy seeing other people's stuff, but I'm busy. It's, you know, sometimes it's, I mean, that's just not my thing. So, but essentially, I what she's saying is, <laughs> <laughs> she's like, don't be following me because you ain't going to no, see. No, I mean, that's, you know what? Because I'm going to have some things coming out. <laughs> uh, but it's just like when I'm dropping something, I, I, I'll, I'll make it now. Okay. But, but it's not like when people, hey, they want to, follow me on Instagram. That's great. Cause you know, I love to connect people and yeah. I have, you know okay. what I mean? So it's just like, it's probably more for somebody else and not me, but you know what? I'm open to it. And, you know, and I love the fans, you know, I go to these horror mm -hmm. conventions. They're, they're probably the most, Oh, I mean, they're, they're, they're hardcore, man. I mean, but I love the people. Yeah. You know? I love the people and they come out in I'm appreciative of everything. So, so, so does that mean that they can just hang out they, on your they, Instagram they can, and wait can, for you to they post can, They can. I, I add them on Instagram. I mean, follow me because I'm a, I'm gonna be dropping some stuff. It's just that I'm 
busy doing some other stuff now, but it, there's some stuff coming up. Okay, so what is your yeah. Instagram? Uh, look at let, let me look at. I think it's Kelly Joe Mentor. Yeah, it's I think Kelly it's Joe Mentor. Kelly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so well, follow her. Follow her, and when she is ready to let you know what's going on with her, she's gonna post it. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, oh, so this is how you post this? Oh. And my sons are looking at me like, mom. Yeah. So. Well, I appreciate you for being a guest on the show. Thank, Thank you for you taking the time. time. Absolutely. All right, All now. Right. All right. Thank you again. <laughs>